So it's it's uh, August the seventh, two thousand seventeen, Harold, and it's two days after my seventy eighth birthday. <laughs> as we as time flows on, but um, let's maybe just start out with some of your background before. Well, to go back to your high school experience and move on to college. Well, to start with, Bob, today is August seventh. Uh, 2017, and it's Pat and ours uh, 52nd wedding anniversary. Oh, is it really? Okay. <laughs> so, uh, it's something wow. you know. Uh, you go back a long way with uh, high school. You know, I attended uh, DeWitt High School, uh, and graduated in 1961, and the following year, it's just like uh, Western Dubuque. It changed because then it became Central Community Schools, which in turn uh, took in other communities other than just DeWitt. They took in Lomore, Grand Mound, Welton, and uh, changed some things. They still had some kids coming from uh, Eldridge North Scott because they didn't have a high school there yet. So some of those kids that uh, were high school either went to something in Davenport or came north to DeWitt. So things changed dramatically at that time because that's when uh, Eldridge uh, North Scott was formed at the same time. So Western Dubuque and DeWitt and all those schools back at that time uh, were changing dramatically. Uh, graduated in 61, moved on to the University of Buke, spent four years there playing football. Um, tried basketball, I was never a basketball player, uh, but uh, did some things in track and graduated there in 65 uh, with a, a degree in uh, teaching, uh, teaching English. Um, went to Belvedere, Illinois High School, my first job, and spent one year there teaching uh, English, coaching. Uh, Sophomore football, uh, assistant varsity basketball, and track. Um, at that time, you know, way back when, uh, when you coached uh, a sport, you did everything. You did everything, and so in football, we tried to determine how much we're getting paid per hour, and the number of time or number of hours we put in for coaching and and uh, scouting and everything else. Uh, we figured it out that. that Towards the end of the season, I was getting four cents an hour. You know, so you look back at that and you think, "Wow, why wouldn't you do something like that?" But you did it because you love to do that. You like being around kids. But after uh, the Belvedere uh, stint uh, for one year, uh, we moved back to DeWitt um, to teach and coach. I taught there for, or spent seven years there, with three of them being teaching and coaching, uh, coaching uh, football uh, or sophomore football. And, and wrestling, I guess maybe been four years. In the last three years, I was uh, teaching a part time and then assistant principal. And from there, um, in 1973, we left there and moved to Dubuque. And I was at Dubuque Senior High School for until 1978. You got your your uh, administrative uh, degree in that period of time. Yes. Uh, uh, and while I was in Dubuque, I, uh, I I got my degree at. Uh, Truman State. Now that was Truman State. Now it was Northeast Missouri State in Kirksville, Missouri. Uh, drove there uh, during the summer, and then uh, a friend of mine, Danny Barr, and I drove there one night a week during the winter season. Oh, that, was a, that was a drive. Uh, yeah, it was about uh, four and a half hours to get there. <laughs> Had a class at seven o'clock. We got out of there at uh, at ten and drove home. Okay. And normally that was done on a uh, uh, Wednesday night. So we get home and then you get up uh, and go to work the next day of school, you know. So, but it, but it ended up that I, I spent uh, two and a half years getting my degree in, in administration. So some, then summer school too, maybe. Yeah, did summer school, okay. two summers. Okay. And then a couple classes during the during the during the winter or whatever, driving there. Um, and then after that, uh, moved to uh, Dubuque, where I started my degree in um, uh, administration. Uh, for a superintendent, and uh, that's when our, our son uh, was diagnosed with cancer, so I had to kind of stop doing that uh, for a number of years, but not only because it took a lot of time, but also because of the mounting bills with uh, uh, treatment of cancer that you uh, didn't have any extra dollars to continue your school educational program. So uh, once that was all over, uh, and during my time uh, at Western Dubuque, I started there in 78, uh, I completed my degree then and uh, eventually became superintendent. But the time at Western Dubuque was, uh, was 13 years as principal and 11 as superintendent. Well, that was, I mean, there were some uh, 
interesting times for us when we got started <laughs> well, West Dubuque High School, right? Well, as you know, Bob, uh, you know, I started there. I didn't know anybody there. Uh, applied at uh, a number of different places at the time. Matter of fact, I applied at Webster City at the same time as principal. And um, my friend, Denny Barr, uh, also had applied at Western Dubuque and, uh, at the same time. And I remember uh, interviewing at both places and uh, I remember talking to Wayne Drexler uh, in his office there, and, and, and one of the last questions he asked me, he says, what do you want to do down the road? And I says, well, Mr. Drexler, he says, I told him, I, says, I want your job. <laughs> he looks at me and says, you can't have it, he says. <laughs> and, you know, and, and then after I left the interview there, a um, uh, gentleman, the, the Bob uh, Horsfall from uh, Webster City called me and says, hey, uh, we had, I had a good interview there uh, and, and really liked the, the system there. It was a very good system, much like Western Dubuque. Uh, and he called me and says, hey, I'm going to offer you the job. And I said, well, I want to wait and see what happens here at Western Dubuque. Uh, I had to wait two days and then uh, Western Dubuque called me and said, hey, this is, we want you and this is what we're going to do. And so I I'd agreed to go to Western Dubuque and called Bob Horsfall back. Okay. And uh, Bob says, I told him, I says, well, I'm sorry, but I'm going to take the job at Western Dubuque. He says, do you know anybody else? He's something like you. And I says, yeah. I says, somebody like me. I says, is Denny Barr. So Denny, he called Denny Barr and, and eventually hired him. Denny went to Webster City. Yep, he went to Webster City, closer to his home. I stayed closer to my parents yet here at, at uh, DeWitt. So that's okay. how we ended up at Western Dubuque. So that just the location between West Dubuque and your parents' place and Pat also... <laughs> That's a yeah, that, that was one factor. Yeah. It really was because I, you know, there was another factor, and one of the issues prob primarily was, you know, I was in Dubuque for five years, uh, enjoyed the time at, at Dubuque Community Schools. Um, it certainly was a challenge at that time at uh, at uh, senior. I think we had something like twenty two or twenty three hundred kids. I think Hampstead was about twenty four. And at that time, uh, uh, Walter was about eighteen, nineteen hundred kids. Right. You know, so there were three large high schools, so it was a it was a challenge there, but it was a it was a learning experience too. But chose Western Dubuque for not only being close to our parents, but also looking at the diversity that we had with communities. You know, you look at the number of different communities here, of all the small towns and Dyersville included, a larger community uh, that made up the Western Dubuque School District was something that was uh, very interesting for me. It was much like Dewitt. Yeah. Very much like uh, Dewitt and, and Grand Mound and, and those communities down there. So that's probably one of the biggest reasons why we chose that, uh, along with our, our parents being close so that we could help them out. You know, just when we think back to those times when you and I came into the high school, one of the things that always impressed me was we had such a great staff, uh, <laughs> great teachers. Bob, I've said that for so many years. Uh, I think that's probably the key. I can remember the first meeting we had in the uh, social studies room. I remember all the teachers sitting in there, and I was up front, and they were asking me questions. I can remember that vividly as yet today. Um, and I sensed at the time uh, there were a lot of good people there. Uh, and, and one other thing that I that I didn't realize at the time, um, but I thought it would be would be as good, and that's the students that we had. We had a, a good group of students uh, that w were um, fun to work with. Uh, sure, we had to do some discipline at the issues, but that's normal with any type of young people. Yeah. But it was something that uh, I thought was uh, more of a rural background that I was from that I would fit in better and enjoy it more, and um, certainly did. But you're right, the staff, uh, and, and, I, and I have to say this too, that the number of parents that we had to work with were, were fantastic as well. Yep. Uh, so it wasn't just uh, the students and the staff, it was the parents, it was a very variety of communities that we had to uh, bring together and hopefully continue to bring them together as a family. And um, it was a, a very fun time for me. Yeah, it was... Uh Lots of uh, memories of those years in the 80s, um, you know, that things that flash across your mind. Uh, I, always, I always bring back the, the uh, interesting time we had at the Halloween dance. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Bob, there's so many times that, you know, <laughs> what you and I had to go through. And, uh, you know, I had, I guess, you know, I look back and we had a very good re working relationship. Uh, you know, we had uh, a good example, some principals that in today's society do very little with discipline, especially in your larger schools. And, you know, you and I decided, hey, you know, maybe it's not just you as a system principal, it's me too that needs to be involved with that. And I really believe that we as, as administrators uh, enjoy the time spent with kids, with students, yeah. as well as staff. Um, and I, you know, you look back on that. What you just mentioned that Halloween. I look at some of the other dances uh, that had, we had, and the things we, the dances we'd have after ball games, the proms, the proms we had, the where we had them, you know. And I think, and I look back at some of that, and I, I look, I just talked to somebody probably within the last six months about after prom. <laughs> somebody asked me about when that all started. As we started, yeah, eighty-five maybe. Yep, yeah, I'm gonna say, yeah. Somewhere in there. Yeah, maybe 80, 45, somewhere in there. We, I said, we were the first one in the area to have an after prom. And I said, we did it. And I th we thought it was fantastic. And I think it still is. It's changed. Yeah. Well, it's more, they have more uh, choices. Uh, they do. They do. To do wherever. <laughs> but, you know, it's something that I think has, was started a long time ago to to provide something else for students other than just the prom, especially going out and drinking. You know, yeah. you always have that issue here. Uh, and all schools have it, I guess, and more so in other areas as well. So, I, I, you know, I, I look back at the number of times we had to deal with students, uh, different things we had to do. Uh, our band uh, going to the different uh, oh inaugurals, uh, going to the different uh, parades uh, in Florida, whatever. You know, I, I looked at the number of parents involved in those types of things. Uh, whether the uh, different activities, um, I think, was just fantastic. And, and I, I remember a lot of those things. Uh, uh, students talked, we just talked a little bit ago about some of our students, and, and they bring up issues that happened in school. And of course, I can't remember everything, but once they start talking about it, it, it comes back, and you say, yeah, this is what happened. You know? And they, they kind of wonder about how, how we can remember all that. But they, you know, some of it I can't, but a lot of times you can. Well, last uh, Friday evening, uh, Lucy and I went to Dyersville for the uh, baseball tournament because they were inviting the past uh, mm -hmm. queens. She was a queen in 1970. And uh, at any rate, <clears throat> we went there and she visited a lot of other l ladies that were there. But uh, the, the color guard did the uh, national anthem. And anyway, well, uh, when they came off and they came up there, and well, it was uh, uh, Jerry <clears throat> Becker, Jerry mm -hmm. Becker, Jerry and Kathy. Kathy was there. And so we sat and visited for a while because we uh, were with together on the, one of the band trips to Washington, D.C., uh, whatever year that was. Anyway, we, Jerry and I remembered we were driving the Suburban coming back, <coughs> and uh, we always had like the tri-state buses. Like There was like seven buses of kids, mm -hmm. and those buses were going... Uh, on Interstate 80 going going back west, going home, and they were flying. We were trying to catch up with them, keep up with them. And Jerry and I remembered that we switched uh, drivers without stopping one time because we didn't want to lose them. So we, and we said, well, we couldn't be able to do that now. So. Oh, boy. No, no. You know, Bob, you mentioned that about uh, uh, the buses. You know, and I remember uh, the number of times they did the... Uh, uh, trips, especially the inaugurations where they yeah. did the radio ads and everything, raising money for that. And, and it's a phenomenal thing to me is that a community like this could uh, bring together that much effort to help them uh, attend, attend something that, that a lot of the students never had a chance to do. But, you know, I, I look at that now. Um, I've driven bus for the last 12 years, a tour bus, so I've had a chance to, get, to have students on, on, on board. And one of the trips was the West Dubuque Band uh, going to Florida for something. I can't remember exactly what it was, but uh, stopping in uh, Nashville, Tennessee for two evenings. And one of the evenings we went to the, uh, a place uh, that had a large uh, dance floor. And uh, this, uh, this uh, restaurant bar whatever, uh, uh, hired a, uh, a country dance person that uh, came in and, and, and had the students out there dancing, uh, different things, you know. And, it, and, I, and I remember 
how, how, in my opinion, how great it was to see kids involved in something like that. Yeah. The kids we had on that entire trip were just fantastic. And I, and I still see that. I've done a lot of trips to D.C. with the Right to Life uh, movement and uh, spent time in D.C. with the students. And uh, So, you know, I, I look at these kids that came from our area here as uh, still the same, still good kids, uh, still uh, have a, yeah. an idea of what they want to do, and uh, sure, some have an issue once in a while, but I think that happens in all schools. But uh, um, Well, just maybe we shift the gears a little bit. I remember you and you too uh, during that time, Harold, and um, later on we became superintendent. The challenges we had trying to, <laughs> to get bond issues passed. You have memories of that, I'm sure. <laughs> Well, yes, and you know, and that's that was probably one of the more frustrating things. But you know, I understand the culture and the climate within our within our system. You know, um, and I, I don't think you can uh, say anything really negative about it. It was just a difficult time to to uh, impress on people the needs uh, of our public school. Um, I, I, you know, I guess one of the things that probably uh, I thought I've thought more about over the years is the number of portables we had. Oh, and, and, and what that really meant and, and, and what kind of issues could arise because of just having portables there. You know, so, <laughs> and, you know, I, another thought just came to my mind about the portable. Remember the time that uh, the raccoon was out there and <laughs> the oh, yeah. police officer came and uh, put a hole in one of the portables by a guy trying to kill the raccoon, you know, and I had a big uprising. And, and, I, and I agree with it, you know, that, hey, that should not have been done, but there's nothing we could stop do to stop it at that time because we just thought, He'd scare the thing away rather than trying to shoot it. <laughs> but you know, I, I look at that, that back at that, and, and then what we have today, it's amazing uh, oh, what the two, uh, the two cent uh, or this tax uh, thing has done to help uh, provide some excellent facilities for our school system. Um, I've looked at over the years the, where we've gone with the number of students involved in within our public school. Uh, I knew where we were when I came to West Dubuque. We were about 950 something, yeah. as I recall, the first year I was there. And I knew that we were going to go down uh, in numbers eventually for a number of reasons. Um, and I also remember uh, various schools closing, uh, Holy Cross uh, High School closing, uh, working with students who may want to come to West Dubuque. Um, remember the different. Uh, uh, Times we tried to pass bond issues, and uh, the number of people that helped to to uh, try to get people to convinced that. But um, you know, I look back on that; it was uh, it was a trial. Uh, but I, I, I guess you can, you can sit there and say, "Hey, it was a terrible thing to happen." But hey, that was part of life at that time. That's what we had to deal with. Yeah. Uh, today it's much better; it's much easier. Um, th but there's issues today that uh, we didn't have. Right. You know, we're here where we are. Yeah, if you, we look at the issues that uh, principals <coughs> make today society. Um, in society, you know, it's it's much different. So, you know, and the class I, I direct, I teach, is uh, helping teachers who have their master's to become principals. You know, they go through a lot of different things than what we did. The technology today has changed so many things in society, and especially in schools. Yeah. You know, cell phones is a big issue. Uh, you know. The, the, the ability to find information now uh, in a matter of minutes versus looking up in a yeah. encyclopedia that may be old, you know, is, is phenomenal. It's just uh, changed uh, our world completely. Right. And some people get to the point where they think they wish you could go back to what it was like. Well, I think they could say that about our parents. They wish they could have gone back too. Right. Especially when they looked at Elvis Presley and different things coming about, they thought we were going to hell in a handbasket. Well, we survived and they survived. So, you know, I think we have to deal with that in society that's different than what it was back then. Right. Yeah. But, you know, I look at what time we spent together at, at Western Dubuque, and, and I look at the administrators we had with Wick and Jim O'Meara and the South and Rutz and uh, Tim Showalter and. and it, and I could name a lot of them, but uh, it was a, a very uh, fun time to be with a group of people who cared about students, who wanted to do what the best they could for the students, even though we may not have had the best facilities, 
Um, even though we didn't have the biggest gym to hold everybody. Uh, I remember the number of times we were in that gymnasium, small gymnasium, when we had uh, Beckman uh, or another big rival. Uh, and, and, you know, there wasn't enough seating. Uh, the worst part of all of it, at my, at my uh, experience, was during graduation. Uh, we, we, had to, we had to hold it inside. We didn't have enough room for everybody. And somebody had to, we gave them only so many tickets out for each student, and that was sad that people couldn't come and watch, but uh, if we had it outside, it was fantastic, but um, that was probably one of the things I didn't like at all, but you know, you had to deal with those types of issues because of facilities at the time. Exactly. Yeah, you know, as a lot of things hit you, uh, just uh, remember, memories of uh, all the home football games uh, and, <laughs> and the weather, you know, sometimes was fine, but other times it was not so great. And it, Walking up and down that hill many times was, was. Uh... You know, one of the things I, I, I really uh, was felt good about at Western Dubuque is, is the time that you and I had together, and then we had uh, an opportunity to ha add Larry Conrad yeah. as athletic director, trying to keep up with all the events, uh, and attending events so that uh, somebody was covering those events uh, certainly was not. Uh, a task that uh, people could just uh, say, hey, it just happened. No, that's something you had to organize for. And, you know, and I, and I appreciate very, very much what you and, and Larry did over the years uh, with helping to uh, run everything and keep everything, uh, you know, sure, on even keel. Yeah. Yeah, because it was. It, you know, you, you can't expect one person to uh, attend all of those events and yeah. supervise all those things. So, you know, but you know, I, I still do it. I still go to a lot of events. It was part of my um, upbringing. It was part of my time that I spent there. So I still watch a lot of football games, basketball games, wrestling meets, um, volleyball games, uh, concerts, uh, plays, whatever. So you know, I still I still do that because I, I, I still like it. It's part of my culture. But I do appreciate what you and uh, Larry and, and, and especially a lot of staff members did over the years to help things yeah. at Western Dubuque. It was uh, yeah a lot of a lot of uh, I haven't. Uh, I want to actually try to get to some of the um, maintenance people and some of the mm -hmm. uh, bus drivers and get some of their uh, recollections of, of uh, the things that they went through and experienced over those that period of decades that we worked together. So we'll do that sometime. Well, transportation is, is a big issue in this district. <laughs> you know what they're trying to do right now is trying to get some funding for transportation uh, because what we spend for transporting our school, our kids to school, a lot of districts don't have to do that. I look at Bettendorf as an example. You know, they don't have hard, hardly any busing. They have busing, but it's not like what we have. Their district is so small compared to our 555 square miles. You know, so we have to spend money on getting kids to school rare as they do not, and that's not a fair thing. So hopefully, we tried many years to do that, even when I was superintendent and when Wayne was there. Uh, he tried too, but we never got that done. But they're talking more about it now and more schools are talking about it and involved in it. So I, I think That's something like that could happen. Yeah, it is. It is. Hopefully it can happen so it's more fair. Yeah. Yeah, to get some... That's why it's been a, a saddled us with a lot of financial uh, responsibility that other districts just don't have. Yep, yep. very true. So, very true. Yeah. Well, uh, what about other issues that you... I can recall, Harold, as far as when you were superintendent that you had to, to deal with. Um. You know, one of the things that uh, in our district, uh, we have a lot of uh, square miles, but we also have a lot of different schools. And I guess one of the things I always felt thought was uh, we tried to do anyway is to get along with our parochial neighbors. Um, because they were educating students and, and we were educating students. And, and, and sometimes kids would switch places, go from the public to the private or private to the public. You know, and I guess what I tried to do and what I thought was a good thing is, is we tried to work together to help kids. It wasn't that uh, one was better than the other. When we got on the com 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 competitive floor or competitive field, yes, sure, you were, you were loyal to that school where you, you were whether it be public or private, and you wanted to win. But hey, that, you know, winning at all costs is not the answer. Uh, hopefully what I wanted is that you know, people would be uh, co conducting themselves in a, in a good manner uh, so that they're good sportsmanship and uh, we could get along and, and uh, have fun and enjoy it. Uh, 
One of the other things that occurs to me too would be, as far as uh, in your position, um, it's a rural district, but there's two high schools. That's pretty unique, isn't it? Yes, it is. You know that that was a, you know that's a problem for some people because you know if one gets one thing, one the other one wants it, or vice versa. <laughs> so you try to you know you try to be fair about it. Um, you know, in a larger d school, you know, so maybe we had more class. We had more class. We had more students in Cascade. Cascade was a good school too. Uh, you know, because of, of where they were, uh, you know, uh, they weren't as large, but yet uh, they did. They had some uh, some great staff members as well. So you know, it wasn't a sense that one was better than the other, but it was something that uh, was more of a challenge. Yeah. Because uh, you know, you tried to have you know, uh, class size is an example, uh, being somewhat similar. Well, it's not only going to be the same, <laughs> because you you can't you can't dictate. There's so courses, especially in a high school level, that you're you're required to have that you can't just say, well, we're not going to have it because we don't have enough students or 20 students in a class. Well, maybe they're going to have 10. Yeah. You know, or maybe you're going to have more than that. So you know, it, it's a challenge. But you know, it's not any different than uh, Dubuque, where they have three high schools. <clears throat> In a parochial school, <clears throat> so there were challenges there too, and I, you know, I guess you, it's it's an issue where you just work through it, and you do try to do what's best for kids, no matter where they are. Yep. You know, and I, and I think that's one of the keys things that I you know in my class that I direct, um, I try to do now is make sure that when they make decisions, you're making decisions like we tried to do as as much as possible, what's best for kids, and yep. and if you keep that in mind, I think most things will come out in the wars that are positive. Uh, yeah. Even though sometimes when we went through some times with uh, financial issues, when the state was not uh, providing enough financial assistance, uh, you know, you do what best you can. You, 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 the, the law says you can't overspend, uh, so you can't do that. So that you have to make some decisions that are not uh, always the best uh, and, and easy to make, especially when you have to reduce. Uh, so those types of things were probably more. Uh, Difficult for me because yeah. it, it, you know what you want to do is what you can do for the best best for kids, and then you had to get rid of teachers or or staff other staff members, whatever. And, and that was always a, a dilemma uh, that you didn't like to. Yeah, face. that's that's got to be the toughest part of the. It is. It is. But you know, you make decisions, and hopefully, it's made uh, with what, one thing in mind: what can you do that that's going to hurt the students the least. You know, and, and right. you know that's if you keep the students in mind at all times. I think you're going to make most of the decisions are are going to be fairly good. Okay. So it's been you know it's been fun. It's it. it I look back on the years, uh, 24 years that I spent at Western Dubuque. Uh, uh, it, it was fantastic. I, I I think I have so many fond memories uh, of things. Uh, even you know you say the bond issues. Well, hey, that's that's part of reality. <clears throat> that's part of life. When did you uh, when did you decide or what made you decide? Well. I've had enough. I'm going to retire. You know that was a good question, Bob. Uh, you know, a good friend of mine, Danny Barr, and some other friends said, you know, hey, when's the time? I said, you know, I don't know when the time is. I knew when um, I was at different schools that I needed to change. I knew that when I, I I left Dewitt after seven years, I wanted something different. That's when I went to to be a senior, and I knew uh, after four or five years. I, I knew after the five years I. Or during the five years, I hate time. I need to change. Mm -hmm. um, and when I became uh, principal, and then after 13 years, I, you know, and I had applied probably a couple years before that for superintendent's jobs, and um, it was it was something that I wanted to try, but I didn't really really want to do that at that time. But I knew just I needed to change. Mm -hmm. And then when it became the time to retire, Bob, that was a I don't know how you decided it, it, it's it's that time. There was nothing negative. It was just that time. I thought, you know, it's time. It's time to do something different. Right. Okay. In which I wanted to do, and um, I've done it. <laughs> done, done it. We built the house uh, on our own. That I, uh, after a few years, I started driving tour bus and did something different. Um, and then I, I did my last trip this past March uh, to Nashville uh, with my a lot of my former students. From the high school, we did it. For, I think I we spent 11 years 
down there with them. So, you know, that was a fun thing to do also. But, you know, I don't know when people, some, some people decide they retire when they're, it's a negative thing. Uh, they're tired of something or they burn out. I, no, I wouldn't burn out. Yeah. I just thought, hey, I, I want to do something different. One of the things I want to do is spend more time with my wife. <laughs> You know, when you're in the school business and, and a lot of other jobs, uh, you're you're not home very much. Right. Uh, yeah. You're 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 gone a lot of nights at meetings. Even as a superintendent, um, you know, that didn't stop from being a principal. I was at a lot of events, a lot of meetings. So, you know, I, that's one of the things I wanted to do is spend more time at home. Okay. Well, you've done it. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you've been able to do it. You know, the other thing that probably is uh, one thing that I really appreciate is happening is. Our three children had an opportunity to attend West Dubuque schools. Yeah, same for me. And yeah. the same for you. Uh, I, I really appreciated that. Uh, uh, I really thought it was a safe environment, the, the vast majority of the time. A lot of good kids, a lot of good people, a lot of good teachers, uh, a lot of good uh, bus drivers and custodians and uh, cooks and you, know, you name it. We had a lot of good people that cared about kids, and I, and I really thought that was something that was uh, very important to me and and if we and I really hope that we created a family approach to our school so yeah. that it wasn't uh, uh, one town it wasn't Epworth it wasn't Dyersville it wasn't just Holy Cross it wasn't Petersburg it wasn't Bernard it wasn't Cascade it was a family type of thing that hopefully uh, we could all uh, agree on getting to getting along and doing what's best for kids and I, and I, and I think that has has happened yeah it has you know uh, I think it has but you know you wonder if it's going to continue <laughs> right but it, I, from what I see it has well listen Harold thanks for hey. our chance to get together and uh, reminisce a little bit.